for the Spirit of God that's in our midst on today. And um, What 
is truth. And I was there, you know, and I was there meditating and amen, trying to build my faith. Yes, because I know this amen place that I was worshiping because uh, I'm from a very big audience, big church. Amen. They were born in it. Yes. Amen. And leaving that um, big church, going to that little small church. Amen. We are maybe about six members. Then you got to work to build. And that was my desire. Yes. And we come together. Yes. It was, amen, a few of us knit together. Amen. And the church began to just excel. A lot of young people. I just go on. Amen. I just want to say to you today, amen. Let us be committed. Why we're doing this, why we're staying committed to Him, praise the Lord. 
so that we, the ultimate goal for us is all to reach heaven and reign with Him. Praise the Lord. And even when you think about it, because even sometimes when things are going good in life, and the older I get, personally, as a young man, the older I get, I realize that the, the only thing I really want is to live my life as peacefully as possible yeah. as I can. And the only way you can do that is with God. Because things are always going to come. You're always going to have obstacles in your way. You're always, the devil is always going to try to set a plot or plan to take you out. Because the Bible says he comes to steal, to kill you, to sift you like you, praise the Lord. But when we have God, we have nothing to worry about. This is what the scripture is telling us. If we trust in the Lord, He is there for us no matter what. No matter sometimes we're on the sometimes we're on the money, sometimes we're on top of the mountain top, but sometimes we have to come down the valley. Because things sometimes things things don't always stay the same, praise the Lord. They never stay the same. There always have to be a balance. And God is telling you, in the midst of that, in the midst of the eye of the storm, He oh, is there with you, praise the Lord. So even now, when I think about the things I was saying to myself the other day, I was like, dang, Lord, I never used to pray like how I used to. Because, you know, things are going so well. I probably don't even read the scripture how I used to. And when you come to that realization, and even when they talk about staying committed to God, there's some things where you realize, like, you know, I have been stuck and it's time for me to pick it back up, which is why I can't. For now, especially in these days, we can't afford to be slacking because God needs us more than ever. The world is getting wickeder and wickeder and it's not getting better. It is yeah. not getting better. Yeah. Not at all. Something I realize at work, and I say it all the time, and many people may look at me strange for saying this, but I realize how messed up the world is. I literally cannot go on service in a plane without seeing someone, or without seeing a transvestite or without seeing a homosexual or things like that. They're full of them in where I work. And sometimes I just pray and ask God to cover me. Because when you're in that atmosphere, you don't know what can latch onto you. Which is why you have to stay covered under the blood. You have to ask God to cover you in these things. And it's like every plane I go on nowadays, which is why it's important for us to continue to trust in God. It is really important. So I just want to encourage everyone, never forget God. Never forget where you come from. Yeah. Never forget where he's taking you. Praise the Lord. We have to ask the Lord 
for forgiveness. You know, so the scripture is said, it said, purge me with Esau, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. May me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Praise the Lord, everyone. So as we go from day to day, let us talk to the Lord constantly and ask Him to wash us and to cleanse us as we go from day to day. Because we know not the day nor the hour when He shall appear. So we want to be ready that when He comes, we will be caught up to meet Him. God bless you. Lord, you brought us through the flood. You brought us through the fire. All of life, you have been there. From the moment I awake, till I lay my head, I will see of the goodness. of the t- 
temple. Jesus answered, Jesus said unto them, See ye not all the old things. Amen. In other words, look at all these things. It's a very
have us, he's going to come and give us a few words. Amen?
there, there's not really any special way to say it, so I'm just going to say it. And it is obedience to Christ never was, never will be a trend. All right, all right, all right, all right. People are, you know, I've noticed, you know, being on, on social media and everything that, you know, people are now talking about, you know, religion. Christ and oh, the Bible yeah. and things of that nature and it's like oh, yeah. it's too many people that see it as an in the moment thing right. and not a true lifestyle right. you know following Christ is not something that you do for the moment because yeah. you see a bunch of other people doing it yeah. it's, yeah. it's something that you do yeah. from the start and That's you right. continue until right. your last breath That's right. That's right. and, and Part of me, you know, just seeing this and being raised here in Rehoboth, and as you all know, you know, under, under yeah. the direction of my mother, yeah. um, assistant uh, pastor, uh, Lord, you know, I cannot say that I have been perfect. Uh, cannot say that. That's it. Um, I have definitely made my mistakes, yeah. but I have been instilled with uh, the understanding yeah. of what it is to be obedient. Right. What it means to read the word, and not just read it, but to keep it in your heart, yeah. and to follow what Christ is saying. It is a rule book. Right. It is a guide because God wants us wants to follow us, to follow Him. Excuse me. He wants us to make it to His kingdom, yeah. and He's given us the answers. Yeah. You know, there are too many people trying to figure it out when right. all God says is read the word and follow it. Keep it in your heart, and that will be the answer to where we need to go. So, you know, just that, that's just all that I have to say. Is, you know, it's not in the moment trade, it is a forever lifestyle. And once you are invested, you continue to invest. I ask that you all pretty much right now.
make a commitment. You have to make a commitment that you're going to serve him. And I like what Deacon Seymour um, said. He was telling us about our heart. You know, asking us, God, to clean our hearts out. You can't truly worship God unless your heart is pure. Only a pure heart is going to see God. And then I like what Brother Chris, all of said something good. Yes, yes, yes. So, I like Brother Chris said. He said, this is, you know, it's not a trend, but it's a lifestyle. Yes, yes. This walk with God is a lifestyle. Yes, yes. It's something that you got to commit to. It's something that you got to give yourself over yes, yes. to. So while he was talking, I thought about the scripture. And um, I'll admit he told me to say some words. I'll admit all of us, everybody say something. No matter what. But uh, when Brother Christmas was talking, I thought about the scripture. I'm um, in Acts, um, the second chapter, and it's four points that God gave the church. And we want to build ourselves spiritual. There's four things that God gave the church. And when he said this is supposed to be a lifestyle for us to do, the Bible says in Acts, the second chapter, in the 42nd verse, and they continue steadfastly in apostle doctrine, and in fellowship, and in breaking the bread. And in prayer, yeah. they are the four points that every church should yeah. have if they want to build themselves up yeah. spiritually. We got to stay with the apostle yeah. Yeah. We got to stay with fellowship, gathering ourselves together. Yeah. We got to have breaking of bread. That's something that we all do. Yeah. And the most important thing that we got to have what? Prayer. Yeah. And then the scripture say, and the fear came upon every soul, yeah. and many wonders and signs was done by the apostles. And they all that believed were together and had all things what? Common. So if we want to build that spiritual house, and if we want to be those people um, in these last evil days that Dick and Leon said, the storm is coming. The storm is definitely coming. And we got to equip ourselves. And we got to make sure we stay in that boat with Jesus. See, the storm came, but the disciples was in that boat with Jesus. We got to make sure that we are in that boat. In that all, so that when the storm do come, yes, that our spiritual man, our inner man, will be built up, so that we can go through it. So we thank God for the service on today. We thank God for the Spirit of God being on us today. And right now, we're going to turn the rest of the service over to our pastor. Let's receive him by saying, "Amen." Amen. Thank you, Mr. Dante. Thank you, Mr. Goodwin. Wonderful way to preside over the service today. We got God thanks for just about everything. Amen. Bless the Lord Jesus. And uh, I'm just going to ask somebody to stand and just give the Lord a big, a big hand clap. That's all. Just stand and give the Lord a big hand clap. Just stand and give the Lord a big hand clap. Just stand and give the Lord a big hand clap. Just stand and give the Lord a big hand clap. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, amen.
we have a good time with the Lord. We're having a good time right now. I remember as Brother Deacon Bunny was saying that the enemies are close and him. Amen. You know, I just it came back to my mind, Deacon, how God wouldn't allow Noah to shut the door. To shut the door. And that's a reason. That's a reason. Bishop, that is a reason. That's a reason. Why right? God did not allow him to shut the door. God told him to bring everything in there. But he never allowed him to shut the door. Lord have mercy, help us, Jesus. You can check it. Check it, you'll find out. It was no. <laughs> so, amen. Anyhow, Bishop was away. Saturday, the 4th Saturday of the month. We will be having an 
endure a meeting with the, with all the saints in house meeting. Please remember, Saturday the fourth of May, we'll have an in house meeting, and that will be from four to six. That's your birthday. Oh man, you're a good man, wonderful. So you, you got to be here, it's your birthday. So we can celebrate with you at least. <laughs> so, however, the 4th of May, Saturday the 4th of May from 4 to 6, please remember to be here. I know some saints, some saints will be traveling, amen, uh, to the wedding over there, Brother Ricky's wedding, amen. But those who will be available, please, uh, be here, the 4th of May, all right, 4 to 6, and um, at that point, everyone should have something on their agenda, what they would like to do or what they're going to do, amen, pertaining to the meet upcoming, meeting. Uh, upcoming meeting, and also, not only, not just the accelerates and Holy Convocation plan, but any other plans, amen, through the year, you can formulate it also, amen, formulate it also. So we just want to give you the heads up to remember these special meetings, all right? So uh, with all of that, I just want to say right now, Bishop is here, and we would like to hear, amen, bless God about this trip, and I know he has something to say. Amen. So right at this time, I want to turn on the rest of the service in the hands of our bishop. Bishop, amen. Keep Allen. God bless you as he comes. So I receive him in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, bishop. I see them coming. We see them coming. We see them coming. Sister Marjorie uh, Parkinson, yes. the 